Well, well, yet another Luciferian ritual has taken place at this big sporting event called the Louis Vuitton, the 37th America's Cup. It took place just a few nights ago in Barcelona and is a very big event watched by many people. And yet again, in the opening ceremony, we have another clear Luciferian ritual. Now, you'll see that they've built in the center of the stage for a start. This seems to represent that unfinished Tower of Babel. Now, this looks very similar to different things we've seen, like with the Commonwealth Games, as I said, that had a Tower of Babel representation. And why would that be? Well, because of the new Babel, uh, what that represents, what that symbolizes, the very first archetype of the Antichrist, you have Nimrod in Babel. The Tower of Babel was built to try and ascend that mankind could unite together in a false unity against the Creator to try and reach up to the heavens, to become like God, to rise above God and to uh, you know, rebel against Him. And also at the Millennium Dome in London in the year 2000, which is something I went to when I was a kid, they had this stage show in the centre of that, which represented, it seemed, the same thing uh, of building the Tower of Babel. The European Parliament is built just like that unfinished Tower of Babel. So this is the theme the other night at this opening ceremony. Now you'll see, um, you'll see that the opening up, and it's in the universe in space. Um, you've got the the tower, the unfinished tower, in like a cosmic world, um, and the narrator says. He actually describes basically order out of chaos. He says that everything is in chaos and uh, that this is actually trying to lead people into wanting this order out of chaos. And this really is depicting that, that idea of this age of Aquarius, this new age, um, new dawn of man. And um, you see all the smoke around it and then you see that this, like, this spiral comes down onto the Tower of Babel that harkens back to that story in the book of Genesis and possibly what they were trying to do back then in the book of Genesis by creating this, this tower that could reach into the heavens. And you see this spiral coming down over the top of the tower. And then you get these, what I will call light workers. You see, you see these, um, these figures here, they've got, all got lights on the top of their head they're kind of like these New Agers or light workers, very similar to what we saw at the Commonwealth Games when these types, th these people were uh, holding these shards of light uh, with the Tower of Babel in the background, as you see there. So very similar theme to there. Um, we'll just call these the light workers or New Agers. They're, they're working for the enemy and they're also involved in, um, in building this Tower of Babel, as you'll see throughout this opening ceremony. And the narrator says, Human curiosity has been awakened. A new dawn has begun. And as the narrator says this, things begin to change. And as I say, we see this spiral into the heavens, connecting this unfinished tower to the heavens almost. And um, you see like imagery where these drones, these lights show, they turn into like a globe. And it's about this new creation, as per usual, this new world, this new dawn. They stand around the front of the Tower of Babel. And as I said, this is all about the theme of humanism, which is man elevating himself to God. And there's a lot of turning things upside down. I don't want to go too far into their philosophies because you can get down these rabbit holes and I'm not here to promote those rabbit holes. Remember the book of Isaiah warns about these people that want to turn everything upside down and turn light for darkness and dark for light. So that is what these people are doing. Um, so they've, they actually turn everything upside down. They put the sea in the sky and the sky in the sea, inverting God's creation. Then the, um, the narrator says, inspired by nature, and harnessing the light, the false light, a new era of human creativity has been awakened. A new era of human creativity has been awakened. Harnessing the light, the false light. Now, as I said, these are the false light workers. The workers of the false light. It's Luciferian. 
So this is what they begin to do at this ritual and the birth of this uh, Tower of New Babel. Um, then the camera goes above and they begin to ritualistically dance around this machine, the top of the tower, or what also looks like a machine, some kind of machine of human achievement. And that you see they're dancing around the top. They're dancing around the top in a circle, just like some kind of pagan ritual, as you see there. Um, you know, this is completely antichrist. This is completely about the new Babel. Well, you see how they're dancing around. They've got the false light on their heads. So then they um, they begin. They get these poles, these light poles, and they dance around with them. Um, and they say that this represents the ocean. And then, or well, the narrator does. And then these false light workers with their beams. Uh, the the uh, the narrator begins to link it to the ocean and saying that the ocean has become a gateway for cultures to merge. The, the ocean has become a gateway for cultures to merge. And then you think about this agenda with the one world and bringing the world together as one, um, forsaking and breaking the boundaries, the bounds of habitation that God has created, and this kind of liberalism and this idea of, of bringing the world together as one, having no borders, having no boundaries, which is another sign of the false goddess, you know, that, that she has no boundaries. So this kind of spirit of the age in defiance of uh, boundaries that actually seek to protect and, and are, are a good thing to have boundaries. And so kind of in defiance of this, of the God of creation, which these people as Gnostics obviously think, well, the God of the Old Testament is the Demiurge and, and is the the God who holds us all back and, you know, is too strict and is, is you know, the false light of Lucifer is, is going to set us free from the prison that he's created. Um, so that's the Gnostic view and that's what these people do believe. So they, they begin to talk about almost like this migration element that the ocean has become a gateway uh, for cultures to merge. And as you see there, they've got all these light poles, which look a bit like lightsabers. But And the, the Tower of Babel actually lights up with a big bright light, the light bearer on the top of the tower. As we begin to talk about the unity of the world, but he also then mentions in the narration, nature and technology can work in harmony. So it's this idea about the uniting, you know, the, the uniting of opposites the union of opposites. So nature and tech coming together, working in harmony together. And some people liken that to the iron and the clay in the Bible prophecy about the nature and technology, the human or man and tech coming together that do not cleave together. Some people liken that to that prophecy when they talk about the iron and the clay. And also, if you look at the old commentaries of the Bible, You'll, you'll find that some of them talk about the iron and the clay being actually nations and cultures that come together or came together in the Roman Empire that didn't quite cleave together, such as the iron being the Roman Empire, and they didn't cleave. So that's interesting there, is that you've, in the narration, you've actually got two references to what some people interpret as the iron and the clay. You know, the, the nature and the tech and the immigrate you know the migration and the cultures that don't quite cleave so both are mentioned there in this um, ritual with the tower of babel and so this false unity of babel starts to come together in the opening ceremony and these people as you see they start to flock into the tower united as one all these different people coming together we get these references of the false unity of babel of the antichrist um you see there that they're, they're standing out the front and the tower, the unfinished tower of Babel, which is kind of being built here over time, the tower begins to light up with flames. And you see the people that at the front that came together into the tower, they begin to build a human tower, as the narrator says, unity in strength. He, sa he mentions unity in strength. And the human tower that is being built, 
as a reference of that humanity, mankind building this tower. Look at this. They're building this human tower as this strange thing happens on stage where this this woman who, you know, begins to sing this kind of music is very dark, is very ritualistic. She's looking at it as it starts to be built. She's presiding over it on the tower and she sings these songs as they build their human tower. Look at that, right up to the level with her. And she's like presiding over it. And, um, and she also does what looks like these Hindu gods, these false Hindu gods with the arms all around the outside of her. And she literally looks like she's conjuring this thing up or orchestrating it. And she's doing this Hindu gods reference, you see there. And um, she's looking at this human tower being built. And you see with her hands there, it looks like she's almost conjuring this thing up. Um, or she's uh, controlling it, in control of it, like a Jezebel figure maybe, or, uh, or whatever. Um, or that false goddess. I don't know what these people are referencing here, uh, but it could be obviously something to do with all those things. Definitely the rebellious woman, adulterous woman, you know, with false religion and false doctrine, teaching humanism, teaching, you know, mankind to rise up here. And they literally built, built this human tower um, in front of this unfinished Tower of Babel reference, or, or at least this destroyed tower of babel that god has judged in the past and they're trying to rebuild it then the narrator says we are about to build a path to the future and the tower suddenly goes into all this matrix binary code and you see that this transhumanist technological element starts to take over the tower and um, you see uh, the drones above the unfinished tower of babel and the matrix green and they, they are representing like data and microchips and different things like that. You see the tower begin to have all this matrix coding on the side. So we go into this matrix kind of world. The light workers, the false light workers uh, begin to flock around the tower ritualistically, trying to, you know, represent building it, you know, hammering in their, on, with their hands in, invisibly, but building this tower again still. And humankind the false light workers constructing this matrix tower that begins to turn into this transhumanist element uh, with the cube there as well and the light shows, the drones and, um, you know, all this matrix um, colours on the side. And you see the, the false light workers are pushing everything into place and this, um, this tube, what well, looks like a tube, that's actually, what you'll see in a moment, in a, in, a, in a minute or two, that this actually is representing the completed Tower of Babel coming together via these transhuman technological drones, these lights, they come together and they begin to build the tower uh, or complete the tower um, that is actually destroyed and, and unfinished. I mean, maybe that is a reference of the unfinished tower in the sense that God destroyed it. Maybe that's what they're representing, I don't know. Because obviously God confused the languages in Babel and he um, judged it. So this is kind of the new ba Babel, and that's all that really matters of what they're symbolizing here. So as this matrix symbolism starts to take place, you see these eyes appear on the tower, uh, and actually this is an AI face, almost like a possible image of the beast face or something that's being represented. I don't know for sure, but it seems like it. Um, the AI technology, remember these things are not prophecies or anything that I'm saying here. I'm not saying this denotes Bible doctrine. I'm just saying what they are ritualistically showing when they're doing these things. So this doesn't exist without the, the singularity, the summary of human intelligence, the summary of humanity, of rebellious humanity. I'm the result of your curiosity. I'm your will. So it's the singularity, folks. It's the summary of human existence. It's the AI supercomputer, the superintelligence, and the, the summary, the unity of rebellious humanity. And then you see, finally, it actually connects. You actually have the completed tower. The completed tower reaching up to the heavens. And it's been completed by transhumanist means. 
remember technology is can be used for good or bad and this is obviously where it's leading in the sense of it being bad but we can still use technology as a tool in the right way um to to do what needs to be done and to use it for good but and they come together at the end on the top of the tower and they all kind of put their hands up um singing putting their hands up in the air uh, worshipping this thing, almost like worshipping the beast. And then above the tower comes this very beastly um, image of these eyes made with the drones. And it's almost like the beast or something um, that, that that is being worshipped. Like it says in the book of Revelation, the whole world will worship the beast. So if you're not in Christ, if you don't believe in Jesus, if you've not been saved, redeemed, if you've not had your sins forgiven, if you've not prayed for him to save you by his death and resurrection on behalf of your sins, that Jesus died for you, you will um, fall prey to this agenda if you're not born again. So you have to be born again um, and, and receive God's spirit uh, and be saved from your sins and adopted into his family. That's the only way you're not going to fall prey to this deception. Please, if you haven't done already, please lay your life down at his feet and say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. I confess my sins to you uh, and I, I repent and turn to you. I turn away from the direction that all these things are going uh, and what I've done in my own life. And I leave these things at the foot of the cross uh, and I, I turn to you, Jesus. Please make me a new creature and adopt me into your family so that I may be in heaven when I die and not go to hell where all of this is leading. Because folks, you can see pretty clearly that this is leading to damnation. This is leading to hell. Um, and, and it shows that all of these things are real. If the Bible is correct about all these things, then it's we need to pay attention to the Bible. We need to pay attention to Jesus Christ and we need, need to pay attention to the spiritual battle that we're in the middle of. I hope that helped, take care.